One of the street angels has just said, why or what on Thursday are we voting for? And I've heard that. I've heard quite a few residents well, you say. Know. Yeah, I know what <laughs> I know what you're, we're voting for. But I've heard quite a few residents have said to me, out and about, what's this election all about? What is it? What are we voting for? Is it a local election? Is it a general election? What is it? So, you're the person to uh, I think to answer that. So. Okay. Police well, authority, the police minute, sitting, which is made up of seventeen people, some councillors, some other representatives, but none of them are actually elected to the police authority. They just sit on this committee. They're part time. They're paid allowances for being on it, and they sit on like standards and audit or HR and finance and so on. So it's to replace that with one person as the commissioner who will be a full-time individual, and the purpose is to link the police with the public that they serve. So the priorities in a town centre for policing are different than they are in a rural community, for example, and that commissioner is going to be responsible for setting the priorities, putting the budget and funding around it, limited as it might be, making the best of that and making sure that the chief constable is operationally independent and running the force, but the police are mapped onto what the public need. So it's to replace the anonymity of the police authority. If people have got a problem, they don't know where to go at the minute. And is there a candidate <coughs> from each of the parties? There are a c candidates from each party, and there are independent candidates. And the thing that we keep being asked is, why is it politicising the police? And it isn't, because the police commissioner will take an oath of impartiality, so they will swear to just represent everybody in Surrey equally. It doesn't matter how they've voted. It's like an MP represents all their constituents. Mm. And the other thing that I would say to guarantee it's not political is that in Parliament they follow a government whip and they vote through lobbies and there's that position to hold. In councils they do the same, don't they, because there's groups on councils and they hold the group position. This is one person. Nobody's going to tell that person what the government line is because they are responsible to the people and nothing else. Okay. This was something that came up before. I can't remember who it was who asked me this now. But um, if so, it's every, it's, you hold the post for four years... Three and a half this time, but it will be four then, then because four. then it will be back in sync with the So, elections. So you are answerable to the communities. Yeah. And if in three and a half years' time people aren't happy with the way that you're performing... Well, two things will happen. You won't get re-selected if you're um, standing on behalf of a party. Right. You could still put yourself up if you're an independent, but there is a selection process by virtue of being a party. Uh -huh. So they wouldn't select you if you hadn't done a good job. And even if you did put yourself up, the people wouldn't vote for you again, so it is accountability at the ballot box. Mm. Okay. But can I ask Sorry. a question? I mean, obviously the the top police person at the moment... Chief, Chief Constable. Superintendent Chief Constable. Chief Constable. Um, is he answerable? She. 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 Sorry. We have time. a woman Chief Constable. Is, but is she... Um, are you answer, answerable to her? Is she answerable to you? Are, are you telling... Are the, these are your priorities, but are they her priorities for the way the police in Surrey Heath will be run? The Commissioner will set the priorities because they will be um, defined with input from citizens, panels, stakeholders, groups, residents, associations. So it's that communication from the public that sets the priorities. The police chief constable will be responsible for operational delivery on that. So there's operational independence. I'm not pretending that I know how to run a police force because she is the expert on that. Right. But it's about focusing on, well, what have you done? Um, you know, we've had a spate of burglaries in that area. What have you done and how many criminals have you caught and what's the next step? So it's really, you have the power as commissioner to hire the chief constable in conjunction with other people to make that decision. You have the power to fire the Chief Constable, but the truth of it is, if you've got a decent working relationship, you wouldn't get to that point because you would be a critical friend and a police force works best under effective scrutiny. So it should be leaving the police chief to get on with the business of policing and not doing the um, front-facing media, you know, politicking stuff. And you and do you you have a budget of all what the police force has a budget? Do you set that budget? And do you tell the police constable then that she can spend 
this much on this and this <coughs> much on that? I mean, what? How, do you have control of the budget or does she? Uh, control of the budget in the sense of what comes from central government funding on the funding formula. What then needs to make up the shortfall from the council tax, the precept, um, and delivering against the police and crime plan on that budget. But that will be um, communication between the commissioner and the chief constable and the chief exec and the chief finance people to make sure it's within budget but meeting the targets. So it's, it is the force overall budget right. that is negotiated. But there will be, at the minute, the police force have got their own chief finance officer and the commissioner's office will have a, a finance officer, but that's a separate budget for running that office. And, and why do we need another level of management? People? Well, it's not actually. It's removing the police authority, which is 17 people at the minute on these committees that I described. They all get paid an allowance for sitting on that. And actually the first year cost savings are probably going to be about £120,000 from not paying those allowances anymore. And so your salary, or the person who get, becomes the commissioner's salary, comes out of the police budget? Comes out of the police authority's running costs. Right. Um, which at the minute, the police authority is about £1.3 million to furnish the office, provide the communications, there's full-time staff in there doing um, things like custody suite visiting and there's specific functions within it which will transition but the cost savings on salaries part of that is about £120,000. For this year? For this first year and that's not a full year because of the transition period. So it should deliver it more cost effectively and with less um, bureaucracy because there's less people and less committees. So you must be quite frustrated then that, that this new position isn't w widely known about? Well, it's quite hard to keep explaining it to people. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But surely, if, if um, my, my view on it would be that you're going, obviously, in the hope that you'll be elected, but if the public, on the whole, know absolutely nothing about it, because we're just one group that when we receive the email, we thought, oh, that's nice, Julie's coming out with us, what on earth is it? And we've come here tonight, none of us know anything about it. Mm -hmm. What you've just said to us is totally alien. We didn't even know <coughs> that this was happening. So ha what I don't understand is, how do the candidates, yourself, and the other five candidates... How do they expect the public to vote for them when they know nothing about you and to know whether to vote for you and nothing about the system and what you're proposing? Well, we've done our best, all the candidates, I'm sure. Um, we've had, I would say now, about 12 different hustings meetings, so 12 public meetings in different places of the county where people have come along, we've given an introductory speech, people have asked questions, you know, there's been a, a chairman running those meetings. I'm sure we've all tried to put leaflets out. We've all got websites. Um, the Electoral Commission sent round a booklet, a pink booklet, I don't know whether you remember seeing that. Most households in the UK should have had it because it's not just Surrey, yeah. it's every yes, area. Got, I yeah. Got that. Yeah, I got yeah. That. And that electoral commission booklet was explaining the voting system yeah. and yeah. saying I, yeah. which websites to go and have a look at. So each candidate has got their information published on yeah. at least that website. In my case, my own website as well. Um, I'm fortunate to have people from Conservative Future and the branches and so on who will go out and deliver these leaflets but we obviously haven't from what you've said covered all the houses and 1.1 million people in Surrey is a big ask to get round so you know I've been working on this full time since July I've done my best but I think it is for me to say um, for a flagship Conservative Party policy it's not had the impetus and the um, focus that it needed to get the message out there. Well, I don't think it's had the impetus or the focus from any of the parties. No. But it should, fair, you know, it should make a real difference. I think this time round has been a real struggle because it's new. People are averse to change naturally, you know, and, and the police authority would say, well, if it's not broke, why are we fixing it? Well, it is broke because there's things that are wrong. 
um, that could be improved. So I think next time around will be easier because people might be saying, well, why didn't we do this years ago? Because mm. it works. It's not doing it on the American system, but it works well there. People know where to go if they've got a problem with policing there, and that's what it should bring here. It should be that connection with the police and the public. But, but also, um, you know, the, the, the people that are out delivering, and that's not just with Julie's team, uh, but all the candidates are volunteers, mm -hmm. a bit like you guys. Um, and, um, you know, I happen to know for a fact that uh, the other parties as well and the other candidates have struggled to get round. I know for a fact that someone in this room now hasn't received a Labour Party one um, and vice versa, you know, the cons some Conservative supporters mm. haven't received um, their leaflets. So um, I think they're doing the best they can with the budgets and, that they have. And it's voluntary. We're running this, just to put it into context, an MP has got probably about 80,000 people that they're responsible for. This is 11 MPs areas, that's why it's 1.1 million people. Mm. Mm. We are delivering a small leaflet that we hope is impactful because we're running this for a quarter of the budget that will be spent on a general election campaign. And that's where they get free mail shots out to the populace as well. So, But as naively as I might sound... <coughs> Am I voting just for this on Thursday? Because yes. I don't even know what I'm voting for, for on Thursday because yeah. I know yeah. nothing about it. Because it. So it, I remember getting the thing for, through yeah. to yeah. say voting. You'll have and six I said candidates. to my husband, what on earth am I yeah. voting for? Six candidates. It's just this election because it's... Just for this one? Yeah, piece. this time round. But okay. next time round it will be... 2016 in May with the local elections. And then we would be publicised more and we would know more about exactly it. Exactly right, because the councillors would be sending their mm. literature around. Mm. And your part would be just part of that? Yes, a separate mm. part of yes. it. Interesting thing for me, and uh, particularly in Surrey, is, is my understanding is that the um, crime is coming down in, in, is. in Surrey. So therefore... It would appear when 75% think Surrey needs more police officers, it's more a question of fear of crime. It is. The perception it's as opposed to right. absolutely as right. To with what is actually happening. And that I think it has come down by 10% in Surrey on the most recent figures, the British Crime Survey figures. This was a random sample. Um, you know, we surveyed more people for this than they do, say, the L'Oreal hair products. I'm not allowed to use product names, but anyway. Yeah, no. why not? Um, so, you know, we've surveyed I, I more... Don't actually use <laughs> <your> <laughs> <products> <laughs> but neither like do I. <laughs> You're worth it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, obviously I'm not worth it. This was a random sample, mostly in Camberley. We did it in other parts of the county as well, but mostly in Camberley. Um, with you know a good few responders and you're absolutely right the fear of crime is um more pervasive than what's actually happening and it takes a while to catch up with the reality i, I did the, so so a bit, i mean it seems to me that um it, it, it may require a bit more emphasis on communication yes so um so on a separate subject from the uh, police Crime and then we're going to go out and do some work. Yeah, um, yeah. but I just, I just, well, you, you've been out already a little bit. Um, and I know that you've got some knowledge of the Guildford Street Angels. What? Just can you just tell the community what you think about the Street Angels? I think it is a very useful addition to let the police get on with dealing with incidents that are fuelled in the nighttime economy by alcohol. Mm. It frees them up to deal with that. And I know the police have got a great deal of respect for the work that street angels do. And more importantly, the people out on the streets respect street angels. I've seen that tonight. It's incredible, actually. Them. Yeah. Yeah. I've never heard um, anything other than positive stuff about street angels.